Hey, uh, uh, Jordan and uh, Jack, uh, Mr. Maxwell, I, I highly respect your work. I know you're one of the people that um, was revealing this information way before it became uh, popular on the web, I guess you could say. Uh, while I was waiting on the phone, I think my question got answered. Um, but I, the intellectual part of learning all this is good and fun. But at, I think at some point, when you start applying symbolism, meditation, prayer, ritual into your life, uh, there's a lot of scrutiny that comes back from the public when you talk about these things. They call you a black magician or a Luciferian or whatever. I've been called, <laughs> you name it, I've been called it. And yet, uh, these things have empowered my life and uh, they've empowered my soul and my consciousness and my love. And I even spoke to Lon Milo Duquette and asked him the same question because I was insecure about it. And he asked me, would you trade the consciousness that you have now for the consciousness that you had then? And I said, well, well absolutely not. And yet uh, the world tends to make me feel like I'm an evil person because I'm, you know, I practice certain prayers, meditations and rituals, so to speak. I was just curious on what your opinion is uh, into the world of the occult or, or uh, let's just say practicing magicians. Are they evil in your eyes or is it pretty much the same thing you were saying before? Well, first of all, uh, I have to tell you that I have heard the same uh, you know, idea expressed virtually daily because I do radio shows almost every day and I have heard so many people over the years tell me the same thing, that uh, because I am involving myself in certain prayers and, and, and doing the kind of research and study I am doing, uh, that I'm losing my friends, my, my family's broken up, or my, my, my wife left me, or, or my friends, and I've been fired from my job, and whatever. Uh, I've heard this over and over and over again. So, uh, but the very basis for the story in the Bible about Jesus, the New Testament story, is basically a metaphor, of, and it's called the greatest story ever told. Because the story that the New Testament is telling you is the greatest story ever told. And that is this that there's a war between light and darkness, between good and evil. And, and, and the scripture has Jesus saying, which is a metaphor, but there's a scripture that in the Bible where uh, Jesus said, um, they asked him, some of his followers asked Jesus, why do you talk to us in parables? Why do you use parables to teach us. Why don't you just come out and say what you have to say instead of uh, using mystical symbols and, and talking in strange mystical ways in parables. And he said, I speak in parables because there are people I don't want to get it. I, uh, there are so many people in this world, I don't want them to know the truth. I don't want them to see what I'm doing. I don't want them to know. I don't want them around me. And so I speak in parables so that uh, it's done in such a way that if the spirit of the Father, if God the Father, the spirit in the universe wants you to understand what I'm saying, you will get it. But if it doesn't want you to understand, you won't get it. And so I speak in parables so that I don't uh, tip you off to the real truth. I speak in parables so if you're supposed to learn and supposed to know, God would let you know. And if you're not supposed to know, you won't. Would you also and say so that it's because keep, it's a, these theme types of things are very powerful? Yes. Well, so just keep in mind that if you have been called, uh, uh, called out, so to speak, that means that you have not chose a teacher. The teacher has chose you, and therefore you have been called out. Well, that happens in life all the time. You know, you, there may be a lot of guys at work uh, like you, but if you get, you know, if you get picked to to go up into the company, well, they weren't picked. Why? Well, because the boss 
decided he wanted you. He didn't want them. He wants them where they are to stay where they are. And he sees something in you of real value. So he appoints you into a higher position. Well, that's the way the spirit works in the world we live in. If you're supposed to know something, the spirit will pick you. You won't. You don't have to know about it and, and decide you want to know. You will know. The spirit will pick you and you will begin to open up your eyes to see things you never saw before. And the more you open your eyes, the more you will begin to see and it will totally change you. But you didn't change you. The spirit changes you. So I'm saying uh, and this is for everyone to keep in mind. When you have been picked to spiritually evolve to another world of knowledge, to a deeper and darker world of understanding and spiritual knowledge, the people around you are not going to be very happy with you. I mean, that's what it says in the Bible. It says if, if you have been picked, the people that you used to run with are not going to like you. They're not going to associate with you. You, your wife is not going to understand you. Your kids are not going to uh, uh, understand what you're talking about. And now you're going to wake up to what it's like to be spiritually awake and alive in a world that is totally dark and has no knowledge of anything spiritual at all. And therefore, they think you are the fool. Well, here's another example. If you are a normal, regular human being with an average intelligence, and you go on a vacation to a foreign city, and in that city there is a large uh, 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 mental health or an insane asylum for the mentally uh, handicapped, and you go to that place just for a visit. As you're walking through this mental asylum, uh, all the people there know each other, and they're always arguing and yelling at each other, and, and there's all kinds of discord going on, but everybody who's arguing with each other, they all remember and know each other. And so they're all happy with the situation, arguing and yelling at each other, but they all know each other, and it's okay. But you don't fit in the picture at all. Nobody there likes you. Nobody there wants to talk to you because you don't fit anywhere. Nobody's ever seen you. They don't know who you are, and they don't like you, and that's it. So don't talk to them. They don't want to hear you. Well, that's the same thing that you are experiencing today. Once you start to wake up, and the Spirit is calling you to wake up and become a different spirit, a different person, and beginning to learn things you never knew before, Everybody else in this insane asylum that we live in is not going to like you. You don't look like us. You don't even talk like us. You don't think like us. So therefore, we don't like you. We don't want you around. You don't be surprised if you start waking up, awakening to the spiritual uh, world around you that most people do not even know exists. And if you start waking up to your spiritual life and your spiritual needs and start uh, you know, thinking in terms of other world knowledge and wisdom, you're going to lose a lot of friends, you're going to lose a lot of people, but you will be in that special group who has been called to know these things. So I don't feel I've missed anything. All the friends that have dropped me and, and left me because of my work, I don't care. I, well. I, don't, I don't need them around me. I'm not about to lower my intellect and my, uh, my spirituality so that I will have other people like me. I don't need them. I'm not interested in people liking me. I'm interested in truth. And so I know if you are interested in understanding the world you live in, then most people are in their beer drinking and their parties and television and partying. I don't care about losing friends. I want to know and I don't, don't mind paying for it. So I, just keep in mind, if you want to know the truth, the truth will set you free. I sincerely and, uh, agree. That's all that I'm concerned about, truth. But, I mean, first, but first, it'll piss you off. But for, <laughs> and a <laughs> and lot of other second, people. you'll lose all your friends. Because they're pissed off. 